Hey, what's up? How are you doing? It's Tony. Just wanted to um, send you a quick, quick video here. Well, I hope it's quick anyway, um, <laughs> because as you know, I like to talk. And whenever I get passionate, um, sometimes it tends to go because the flow, it just keeps flowing. Anyway, I wanted to ask you the question, are you suffering from fraud syndrome? If you noticed, you're joining me intimately right here from my, uh, my couch in my living room. Why? Because it's about to be personal up in here. Um, so I wanted to share that. So I want to ask you the question again, do you suffer from fraud syndrome? And now what the heck do I mean by fraud syndrome? And what do I mean by this? Do you appear powerful? Do you appear confident? Do you appear like you have it all together on the outside, but on the inside, you're freaking miserable and you're suffering? Um, that's the question I want to ask you. And let me share a story with you. And this is why I wanted to do it right here from my living room. Um, I'm going to share a story with you. I'm going to share about my own fraud syndrome that I, that I suffer from because I know there are hundreds and thousands, um, probably even millions of people who are suffering from this right now, uh, especially men, because men were taught to hold everything in. You can't share anything because you'll be considered weak. Um, so I want to share this with you. So for most of my life, um, I suffered from what I call the fraud syndrome. I looked great on the outside. I looked confident on the outside. I looked powerful on the outside. I looked like I had it all together and I was happy. Um, and, I would, and I did it on purpose because I played it that way. Now, I, I have the gift of um, making people laugh and bringing happiness to other people. I have that gift. Um, unfortunately, I used that gift um, the wrong way. Uh, what God gave me to do for good um, I was doing it in the wrong way. So what I was doing is I was um, using that gift of laughter and happiness and funny um, to hide my own pain, to mask my own pain because I hated the, uh, that feeling. And I sure as heck didn't want anybody else to see that because if they saw that I was weak and, and I, and, and, or I should say that I wasn't uh, altogether, that I lacked confidence, that I, was, I, I didn't feel worthy, I didn't feel like I was enough, I felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't supporting my daughter, um, even my older kids at the time. Um, I had a bunch of shame. And because of that shame, I was holding on to that shame. I wasn't talking about it. That made me feel even worse. And the relationships I was in, you know what? I, I pushed them away. I, I, I couldn't let them close to me. I loved and wanted to love, but yet I didn't love myself, so I couldn't let them in because if, they, if I let them in, they will, I will be exposed and they will see that I'm not this confidence person, that I'm not this, this powerful, and when I say powerful, I mean this, this like overbearing, but just like personal power, like you're standing in your truth and standing in who you are. And I wasn't. I was, I, I was actually weak on the inside, and I was miserable. And that's where the anger came from. That's where the bitterness came from. That's where the shame came from. That's where the guilt came from and all these other negative emotions. But I, dis, I pushed people away and left them at a distance. And they, they started, I, I would start to let them in, and then I realized they were too close and I would push them away. I would do something to sabotage it. Um, and, and it was miserable. It was miserable. I didn't have close relationships. I obviously didn't have a close relationship with my daughter. Um, the anger was taking over, but I felt like a fraud. I felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't a provider. And I know there are a million other people that, that, that feel this way. They struggle with this syndrome. And one day, and this was... Four years ago, where all this, all this started, um, I decided to look within. I decided to take responsibility and have accountability for myself. And take responsibility for where I was at. I stopped looking outside for happiness. I stopped looking outside for, for fun and, and love and, and having everything outside. I, took a, I went deep inside. Now, I've done work up to this point. I've done work on myself, and I did it from the conscious level. I surrendered to God on the conscious level, but I didn't do it from the deep down heart, spiritual level. And so I would surrender to God, but then I would take it back. I would surrender to God, then I would take it back. And then I wondered why I wasn't getting anywhere, because I was doing it here. I never fully dealt with the junk inside. So I took responsibility, and I went deep with them. And as I started working on one thing, a lot of other stuff coming up. It's a big onion being peeled back. If you notice my other videos, I talk about this a lot, because this is constant. We all have garbage. We all have junk. And I decided I wasn't going to allow other people to judge me. No, they're still going to judge me, but I didn't have to accept it because I stopped judging myself. I started loving myself. 
And I started dealing with what I felt shame. I started dealing with what was making me feel fraudulent. And I just really dove in and found who I was. And what I found is when you find your true authenticity, you have freedom. And because I went deep within and found and started working and healing on that, I found the confidence that I wanted. I know that I'm worthy. I know that I'm powerful. And now I can show up that way. Because I, I, I went through a, a process of self-discovery. And that led me to, to self-mastery. And within self-mastery, that led me to, um, to emotional mastery. And um, mental resilience. That's, there's two different things. Emotional and mental are two different things. And even up to a year ago, and I was, I've done all this work, even up to a year ago, I, ne- I still felt like a fraud. And I'll even share this. So I didn't fully feel like I was a great dad. Even up to a year ago, last August, was when I finally started making that switch. I've done all this work, and everybody was commending me. Tony, you've been doing so great. You've been doing, you, you're such a great dad. And I would always say, yeah, but, yeah, but, because I still felt like a fraud. Because I was holding on to that junk downside. Yeah, but. Then I realized, wow, look where I've come from and look where I'm at. I am an amazing dad. I've overcome so much. I embraced the confidence. I embraced who I was. I embraced my authenticity and I started sharing that more. And that's how I got to where I am now. Occasionally that still comes up. But I know I'm enough. And you are enough. I know my confidence. I know my power. And because I went within, I took accountability, I took responsibility. I have on the outside what I feel on the inside. I have the confidence. I have the power. I have the freedom that we all seek. We're all seeking fulfillment. We're all seeking freedom, especially men. And if you are, suffering from the fraud syndrome. I just want you to know that it's okay, that there's a better way, because I've done it, and I share it, and I teach it. I teach it every single day with my clients to help them find the freedom. There's freedom in stepping into who you are and letting go of who you're not and not worrying about if someone's going to call you weak or judge you, because Matter of fact, it doesn't matter if they judge you because they're judging themselves when they judge you. But when you know who you are and you step in that confidently and powerfully, it doesn't matter what anybody's thinking. When you show up powerfully anyway, people are going to judge and criticize you, and that's okay because that's not who you are. That's their problem. There's a better way. I teach this process every single day as I'm working with dads to help them show up powerfully because here's what I know, and I realized something today when my daughter Kylie came out to me and asked me to do a ponytail for, from her, from her, for her. She asked me to do a ponytail for her. And I realized that I have this powerful relationship with her. But you know what? That wouldn't be possible. Yes, I'm getting a little emotional. That wouldn't be possible if I had not found the power in myself. If I had not gone inside and dealt with that pain and still dealing with that pain. Because there's, there's new lessons every single day that I get to learn and I embrace these lessons. Every single day, I embrace them, then I can share them. I surrender, I let go, and I release it so that I can share them and, and teach to other people. Because we learn from our own junk, we learn from our own pain. And then other people learn from their pain because they know that they're not alone, whether it's the same situation or not. But there's a lot of people who are going through the same thing that you're going through. And you might just be the person that sets them free. You just might be that person to set them free. And if you want to build stronger, powerful relationships, it needs to start with you. It needs to start with you. You need to have a powerful relationship with yourself. Stop playing a pity party. Stop worrying about what other people think. Stop holding on to that pain and trying to justify why you're still where you're at. You can have pain or you can have growth, but you can't have both. And guess what? When you walk through that pain, it's going to freaking hurt. But look at the freaking pain. (laughs) Look at the pain that you've been experiencing this whole time. For years, for years, for 40 freaking something years, I suffered in pain. And I never wanted to deal with it. It was someone else's fault. 
It was always outside of me. It's time to step up. It's time to stand up. It's time for freedom. Every time I say that word and I get this, I think of Mel Gibson. Freedom! Uh, <laughs> um, I think of that because that's what we want. We want freedom. We want peace. But the only way we can do that is to walk into the pain, embrace it, honor it, love it. I know that is counterintuitive to what we're taught, especially men. We're supposed to push it away and walk away from it. No, face it. It's okay. You know what weight makes you weak? Is when you try to hide it. That's why you end up getting depressed. That's why you push people away. That's why you push your daughters away. That's why you become toxic. Love it. It's not who you are. Embrace that freaking pain. Build a powerful relationship with you so that you can build a powerful relationship with your daughter, so you can build a powerful relationship with your spouse, and so you can build a powerful relationship with the world around you and change someone's freaking life. (sighs) I said I wasn't going to be that long, and I can actually continue right now and keep on going, but (laughs) I got some things to get done. I hope this has served you in some way because that is what this is all about, sharing my pain to help other people. I hope this has lit your Friday up so you can resonate on this and continue on in the weekend. Do me a freaking favor. Share this video because there is someone suffering out there right now from the fraud syndrome. They feel like a fraud because they don't feel the same on the inside as they appear on the outside. There's someone's relationships who are struggling right now because they feel like a fraud. There's some daughter out there who is suffering because they don't have their dad because he does not have a relationship with himself because he's suffering from the fraud syndrome. And if you are suffering from the fraud syndrome, have hope. Know that you can walk through it because I have and I teach it every single day. If you are suffering from that, let me know how I can serve you the most because that's all this is about. How can I serve you? How can I help you find the freedom that you are seeking so you can build a powerful relationship with yourself, which allows you to build that powerful relationship with your daughter, and the rest and continue to build on that as you pull those layers back and as you walk through the process that I teach. Please share this message and let me know how I can serve you. All right? Have an awesome Friday. Have an awesome weekend. I will be back next week. Um, I'm going to do a lot more live videos. I'm going to share more. I know usually I come once a week, but I'm going to start sharing more. Whenever I feel something in my heart, I'm coming on to share it. Whatever I learn something through my pain, I'm going to share it. And, and I'm going to set some people free. I hope it sets you free in some way. I hope it sets the people that you love free because it sure sets me free. All right? Love you all. Have an awesome weekend. And remember, dads, the way we show up determines how our daughters grow up. And what you see is not reality. Once you change how you view things, what you see and what you view changes. Love you all. Have a great day.